I'm Tom Patton, and I'm joined now by Arne Sharpe from uh, FLIR, and we're going to talk a little bit about a tiny little aircraft with an infrared sensor in it, and, and you've got it right here on the table. So, Arne, first of all, thank you very much for joining us, and tell us what you've brought. Oh, thank you very much. It's good to see you, Tom. Good to see you. Um, yeah, I come from uh, originally a, a small Norwegian company called Prox Dynamics. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, we have worked for some years to develop uh, ultra small drones or nano UAVs, as we call them. And uh, last year in uh, November, December, we were actually acquired by Flare Systems. Mm -hmm. So we become a part of the Flare family now. <laughs> uh, it's a great company. We're still in the, what let's call it the integration. Uh, phase, but so far so good, and we're we're happy campers now as a part of uh, FLIR, uh, an American company. So um, back to uh, let's say what we have here is um, we set out some years ago to produce the smallest operational UAV we could think of for professional use, i.e., for the military, mm -hmm. law enforcement, uh, not for commercial use. So for us, it was very important to give uh, what we would define as the dismounted squad, single operators, special operators, mm -hmm. their own set of eyes so that they could have uh, increased situational awareness. Actually, so they could have a much better look what's going on around me. Uh, they needed a light system, a small system, which was easily deployable mm -hmm. and they didn't have to coordinate it with higher authorities just to check out something. So this is very much a system which gives them the ability to look down the street, look on the ridge, look at what's going on down mm -hmm. there within a certain distance, let's say out to a kilometer or even beyond that, uh, and bring them a uh, live stream video and still pictures back to the operator. So it's all about uh, increase their safety and security mm -hmm. and hopefully also can have a look at something, observe something without being noticed. That is important with this system. And if you, if you look at the, one of the sensors here, this mm -hmm. is what we call the black hornet, which is okay. the, the sensor or the bird, mm -hmm. as we call it. It's a small helicopter. Uh, with uh, day cameras uh, in the nose, mm -hmm. it has a rechargeable battery, uh, GPS based and with a classic helicopter construction. And it provides then, as I mentioned, the live stream video back to the operator mm -hmm. and still pictures uh, in addition to that. So what goes into making such a small UAV, what are some of the challenges in miniaturizing all of those things that we see in, in the larger UAVs and larger aircraft into something this size? Yeah, I'm, I'm probably not the best person to answer that. Mm -hmm. I would have loved to have some of the senior engineers with me <laughs> on that, but I've been to many meetings with them. And, mm -hmm. and of course, when the whole sensor has a gross weight of 18 grams mm -hmm. or 0 0.6 ounces, you end up that every little thing or function you want to have here, it is an enormous struggle with size and weight. Mm -hmm. I cannot remember how, or I cannot imagine how many times we have talked to other companies who come to us with great products. It could be a part, it could be some sort of a capability mm -hmm. we could introduce here. And when we look at the hardware, we say, <laughs> okay, come back when you have reduced the weight with 90%. So uh, it is a challenge, mm -hmm. and it is. But we chose back in the days when, uh, roughly ten years ago, when we started up this. I was not a part of the company then, but when they started, um, they had a lot of discussions about which design to choose because mm -hmm. there are several. It could be a quad, it could be a different design, but we we chose to have a, a traditional helicopter design. And one of the main features there is, of course, uh, energy, the mm -hmm. energy budget. Uh, flying drones, there are many factors to take into consideration. Maybe the, one of the most important is the energy budget. Mm -hmm. how, how long can I fly? What can I achieve? Uh, 
-hmm. how much power do I need for the various functions, the technical functions you have on mm -hmm. board. And so this, this requires bird. enough energy for to run one motor instead of four and gives you more energy for all of the sensors and transmitting Correct. video. Well, back. I, in fairness, I would say uh, the helicopter design has certain advantages, as have also the quads. Mm -hmm. So at the end of the day, it is also as little bit of what is most important for you. Where have you put uh, most mm -hmm. weight, to put it that way? What is priority number one, two, three, and four? And, and as you see here, uh, we have put extreme focus on uh, being able to make a light system. Mm -hmm. uh, many, also in the military world, and uh, underestimate the, the share weight the soldier meet with all his equipment. Mm -hmm. So we have taken that into account and, and put every effort into not adding unnecessary weight to the soldier's load when he's out there. Is another aspect of it perhaps that it's very difficult for an enemy to see, to detect, to know that it's there? Yes. Uh, the, the combination of the form, the combination of uh, the size, and of course also the sound signature. Mm -hmm. uh, it is a very silent system. So uh, I don't think it's written in the handbook, but I always say go low, go close, and be silent. That is a lot of the focus and the, the key uh, criteria uh, for this system. Take us through uh, a, um, and I'm searching for a word and it's not coming to me, but a, a standard mission that, might be, that this aircraft might be used for. Yeah, let's take uh, a couple of examples. Mm -hmm. um, you are in a situation somewhere downrange and it's 10 minutes until you are going uh, and you're gonna uh, go into a compound. You still don't know what's behind those dirt walls, mm -hmm. those 10 feet high dirt walls. And you would like a last minute update on, are there any guards there? Are there any civilians there, children? Uh, how can we best avoid uh, collateral damages? Mm -hmm. So it is safety both for our own forces, but it is also safety for whoever is in their third party civilians. Uh, another typical example is somebody is uh, shooting at you from a ridge some hundred yards away mm -hmm. and instead of sending folks in, in your own folks into harm's way, you can send out this and within a couple of minutes you can identify who's up there, how many, uh, is this a serious threat or is it something else? Do we need reinforcements? How do we deal with this one? Uh, so it, it, uh, let's say we are going to, you can do reconnaissance, mm -hmm. you can send it out in front of you and check out the main road along the road. Mm -hmm. uh, so it, it, it is really a useful tool which adds up to the safety of our own troops, but also uh, it can help avoid uh, casualties on the other mm -hmm. side. And, uh, and especially collateral damages. What are some of the civilian uses? Uh, up to now, we, we only sell this system to governments, mm -hmm. i.e. we sell them to military and law enforcement. Mm -hmm. But we, uh, we, we clearly see a relevance for law enforcement mm -hmm. uh, along many of the same lines as we see in the military. Uh, we could also see uh, emergency organizations uh, let's say catastrophic conditions, mm -hmm. and you have a you have a need to send in a set of eyes mm -hmm. and to have a quick look uh, at something before you go in there. Uh, so we have had a lot of attention, also an interest mm -hmm. from you know, everything from FEMA to other organizations, uh, which would come in, which would be relevant mm -hmm. uh, in case of some sort of a disaster or a natural catastrophe. Uh, but our main focus areas for the for this one now has has been since we started this uh, military and law enforcement. And you mentioned that it's good for sending out in front and and getting an idea of, of reconnaissance. How far can it fly generally? And I know you're not going to give away trade secrets, but it's is it is it a line of sight aircraft? And how far out in front of you can it go to send back reliable data? We, it depends, of course, on the topography, mm -hmm. it depends on the wind, it depends on uh, also to a certain extent on temperature. 
Uh, but we say normally it has a range of a mile, mm -hmm. uh, give or take, pending those factors I talked about. So for a squad level unit, uh, whether it is a kilometer or a mile, that depends on the situation. But mm -hmm. that is uh, the capability we are talking about here. And, and also important here is that it also has uh, a capability beyond visual line of sight, uh, which also uh, gives us the opportunity or give the operator the mm -hmm. opportunity to fly behind structures, behind trees and uh, behind other uh, obstacles out there mm -hmm. to check out what's going on there. Does it require an operator is it, or can it operate autonomously? No, as of today there is an operator. Mm -hmm. It is a very simple system. That uh, was also one of the key mm -hmm. uh, factors we put into this when we started. It should be very simple to operate. It should not demand uh, an extended training period. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, technology takes care of all those items needed to fly it. So uh, from that perspective, it's also a, a very easy system to handle. Mm -hmm. what, um, what the future will bring in, uh, in the coming years, that's of course uh, up for uh, a couple of the next events when we meet again. <laughs> and yeah. I'm sure we will. And I think we need to leave it there, Arnie. Thank you yeah. very much for stopping by and joining us and, and you. showing us your, yeah. uh, with all the, the, the large UAVs that are in this hall, that's one that you can actually bring and put on the table, and we're yeah. very happy to have you here. Thank you so very thank much. You very I much. appreciate your time. Aero News Network's coverage of the Association for Unmanned Vehicle Systems International's Exponential 2017, live from Dallas, Texas, is brought to you in part by the following sponsors. Let Patrick Neal & Associates provide the legal expertise needed to navigate the commercial UAS industry. Whether it be waivers, exemptions, operational plans, or other issues, we can provide the guidance you need to keep flying and building your successful UAS operation. www.droneattorneys.us in collaboration with NASC, introducing Sonics Aerospace, bringing you the Taros Group 4 UAS, the redesigned Tiger Shark Block 4, and the Subsonics Twin Jet UAS, all derived from flight proven manned systems, not concepts, real aircraft. More at sonicsaerospace.com.